What is going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through some local SEO strategies that you can begin implementing today so that you guys can start ranking on Google Maps organically, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, these strategies we primarily use on our local clients. Um, we are a local SEO agency, so we primarily only focus with local businesses, mainly service type businesses. Um, so we mainly do website design, local SEO, and Google ads for them. Um, so I want to take you through some of the strategies that we implement across all of our clients that helps them get results, right? Um, so first of all, with any SEO strategy, even more importantly, local SEO, it's going to start with content, right? How good is your content? You don't just want to have any content. You want to have optimized content that's targeting the proper keywords. So you want to have a mixture of content that's written for a user, but also content that's written for a search engine that's going to crawl it and analyze the keywords that you're actually including within that content. So it's very important that we're using the right keywords to promote our services. For an example, what does that mean? Well, if you're a roofer, such as Integrous Roofing out in Houston, shout out to Cody, let's take a look at the blogs. If we take a look at the blogs, we can quickly notice that we're targeting specific keywords within these blog posts. For an example, tile roofing and shingles. Commercial roofing company in Houston. Best roofing company in Houston, replacing your roof, right? So we, I like to have a mixture of local keywords and general keywords. Why is this important? Because we can use these blog posts and we can interlink them to other pages that we want to power up um, because you're not all the time going to rank let's say you just publish one service page let's say you publish a page about roof repair well just by publishing that one page about roof repair doesn't going to mean it's going to rank especially if you're in a highly competitive area so you have to create supporting pages and blog posts are a great way to do this so you can create different blog posts about different topics about roof repair and then you can interlink those blogs to that service page and it's going to help power up that one roof repair page. So what I mean, so let's take a look at this blog post right here, choosing between tile roofing and shingles. If we take a look at this blog post, we can see that we're interlinking to some of our inner pages. And what is the inner page? An inner page is really just a page in your actual website. It's usually going to be a service page. For an example, if I take a look at all these service pages right here, this is what you would consider a inner page. And you want to make sure that you're interlinking to all of these different pages, right? Because each of these pages could rank on their own for their for their separate keyword, right? And uh, we have this right here linking to asphalt shingles. And then we also have this right here linking to tile roofing. So each of these have their own page that we're actually targeting, right? So if we if we click on Asphalt Shingles, it's going to take us over to the Asphalt Shingles service page that we have that's targeting Asphalt Shingle Roofing in Houston. So this page could rank on its own. And the reason you wanna be doing this is because you don't just wanna re rely on, let's say you're a roofer, you don't just wanna re rely on targeting uh, roof repair. You don't just want to rely on targeting roof replacement. You want to make sure that you are spreading out and trying to capture as many keywords as you can to drive in the most traffic because you don't really know what a user may be searching for. They might be searching for hell roof repair. They might be searching for storm roof repair. So we also want to make sure that we're targeting these different keywords with their own individual page and using your content and specifically blog posts to power those up is extremely important, especially when we're talking about local. So that's the first tip there. Um, the second tip I have for you is obviously, how do you find these topics to blog about? Well, if we go into SEMrush, um, and let's do a search here. So we're in the keyword overview tab. Um, for an example, let's do a search for window tinting. So we get all this data right here, right? But we really want to focus on this area right here that says questions. Why is this important? Because these questions are highly focused around our service. 
So this doesn't really matter whatever you search for. You, you know, you can do power washing, window tinting, you know, plumbing, roofing, whatever industry you're in, um, you can put a general keyword because that's going to give you the most topics. So make sure this keyword is general. Don't make it local, at least not for this specific um, strategy that I'm going to be showing you. So just go ahead and put a general keyword that you want to target. So for this example, I'm going to use window tinting. Go to the questions section and click view all keywords. Now what this is going to bring up is all of the related questions that SEMrush is finding um, that can bring a lot of traffic and not only that but can boost up our topical relevancy right we want to increase that topical relevancy we want to make sure that our website is the authority within your local space and how do you do that by having good optimized content targeting specific questions that people are searching for so if we go into here um, it looks like the first question is how much to tint windows so that one keyword gets 12,000 searches a month, um, although it has a keyword difficulty of 39, which you know isn't extremely difficult. But if you're a brand new website, especially in the local space, we want to start off by targeting uh, lower KD keywords. And it's very simple to do. All you have to do is click on the KD feature right here. Um, let's click it one more time, and it's going to filter by easiest to hardest. So now we have the most, the easiest KD questions that we can target um, immediately to start ranking for keywords. Um, you can literally start ranking for these keywords, you know, within the first week of publishing your blog posts, if they get indexed, um, just because of how easy it is to rank for. So for an example, how to tint curved boat windows, see? a lot of window tinting companies do provide window tinting for boats so this could be a keyword to go after um, how to tint model car windows that's another question how to darken existing window tint so this keyword right here gets 110 searches a month and it has a keyword difficulty score of four meaning it's very easy to rank for um, so really all you want to do is go through these questions right here and make a note of, you know, I would say at least 20 of these so that you can already plan out your content schedule. And you can just put them into a simple spreadsheet, kind of like um, we have here. Um, you know, it's really basic. All I really care about is the blog topic. I don't really care about the keyword difficulty score. I really don't care about the search volume because none of that is really accurate anyways. I just want to get the main keywords so that we can write a blog post about it and start pumping it out on the website as soon as possible. Um, so, you know, we just make a list here of, of uh, topics that we find through our keyword research to write about, put in the spreadsheet, and start knocking them out on a monthly basis. Um, so that would be the first step that I would do whenever you are planning on getting some more content on your website. After you created, you know, your main pages, then create your service pages, then I would go into creating blogs and then city pages. Um, so that's kind of how I would go about that. But that's the first tip there. Second tip I have for any local business, especially if you provide a service, meaning you go to the people's homes or properties, is to create city pages. So if we take a look here on the website of Integrous Roofing, we can see all these pages here under the areas we serve section. All of these different cities have their own individual page. And the reason we want to target these different cities is because it's going to expand our reach and allow us to rank in different cities that our Google My Business is not located in, right? So your Google My Business technically can only go out, you know, so many miles, right? Before Google's like, hold up, you're not actually located in the city. So they're really not going to push you out further than your immediate area, unless it's a very low competition area. Um, but whenever you're in these more competitive cities, you want to make sure you're targeting the surrounding areas, the surrounding suburbs with their own page. Um, so for an example, let me show you some of the results we get for um, roof replacement, Missouri City, which is a uh, suburb outside of Houston. You can see they're ranking number one right here. Um, 
Manville, Texas Roofing Company, another city outside of Houston. You know, they're ranking number one right here. Um, so it's very important that you create these pages and then make sure you optimize them as best as possible. Um, and what does that mean? Well, let me go ahead and show you. So if we take a look at the Manville page that's ranking number one, um, we pretty much just have this page and obviously you do your, your you know, your regular on-page optimizations, make sure you have your H1, your H2, your H3s, make sure all the images have the keyword and the file name, make sure you have decent content that's optimized for your services in the city. Um, really all your basic on-page stuff. Um, and then just one thing I do like to add is I like to add individual um, resources or signals about that specific city. So what does that mean? So we embed the map of that specific city on this page. Um, I add some info here about the city of Manfield, as you can see, um, some resources. So we external link to resources in that specific area. Um, so like, you know, anything that's important, anything, post office, library, you know, any anything of meaning in that specific city. Um, and then I actually like to add the driving directions and embed the driving directions from that city to your location. Um, and that's really simple to do. So for an example, if I go into here, I just look for in Flavors Roofing, go to Maps. Uh, let's click on his listing right here. Click on Directions. Starting point, we're going to put, you know, let's do the city that, that I'm showing you guys, which is Mandel. And now what you want to do here is you can see it creates the driving directions. Go to the menu, click share or embed map. Then you just grab the embed a map iframe code. Um, and then you can just paste it in there using HTML. Very simple to do. Um, so that's something that I would recommend you guys to do for your city pages. So that's tip number two create city pages and optimize them as best as possible using resources and signals in that specific city. And then before I continue to the next tip, let me just show you real quick some of the you know near me rankings that we have so far. Um, so roofing company near me, you can see they're almost in the top three positions all across the board. Um, same thing with roofing near me. Um, which these keywords are highly searched for specifically in this area. You can see they're almost in the top three um, across the board as well. Um, and ultimately, all of this has led him in the past 60 days. Um, he has received 126 calls just from organic uh, rankings, right? Just from SEO. So all of this together can be very powerful once you're, once you're in those top positions, right? So don't neglect all of the tips that I'm telling you guys because it does work. So on to the next tip. So now we move into some of the off-page strategies. The thing that everybody loves to see, I don't know why, but everybody loves to see the off-page strategies. And now this is really where a lot of the magic happens. Once you have your on-page, once you have your website structure, then we start moving into the off-page uh, strategies, right? And what does this mean? This means building backlinks to your website, to your properties, to your entities. Because why? Because real brands, real websites are getting social signals. They're getting backlinks from other websites on the web. All of these signals together are telling Google that you're a real established business. And obviously, the more backlinks, the more social signals you have, the more social proof you're going to have in the eyes of Google, and your rankings are going to go up as well. So some of the off-page strategies that we do is, first of all, we create you know the social fortress or social networks, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you're just, these are kind of some of the more um, initial links that we like to build out. Um, and these are kind of like profile backlinks. So we basically create profiles on a bunch of different uh, social media websites. Uh, for an example, about.me, uh, Pinterest, Tumblr, uh, BuzzFeed, Quora, MySpace, Medium, right? 
So we create profiles on all of these. And let me just show you kind of what that looks like. So if we go to the about.me, so this is just a quick profile, you know, has the company, company name, company address here about the company, um, and then has the email. And then if we click visit my website, it's going to take you directly to their website, right? Creating that backlink. And that's basically what we do with all of these profile backlinks um, or social backlinks, whatever you want to call it. They're pretty much the same thing, but we create two waves of those. So this would be the initial wave on month one. Um, then we create another wave of more profile backlinks on, on month two, right? Um, and then at the same time, we also create citations. So obviously everybody knows what citations are. I don't think I have to explain that. Just getting your business name, address, phone number, and website across many different online directories. Um, so we do two waves of business citations. Um, and then normally we do a third wave of local citations and industry specific citations. So we'll look for any citations specific to that industry and any citations specific to the city that they're actually located in. Um, and you can find many different providers to provide uh, the, all these services for you because unless you have someone that helps you out, um, such as I do, you're really not gonna have the time to build these out yourself. So some of the uh, services I would recommend is if you just go over to Legit, um, you can just search for like profile backlinks I think this guy is, does a pretty decent job. He'll give you 75 profile backlinks um, for around 12 bucks. Um, you know, if you want, you you can do two waves of those. Um, this guy does social media profiles. So this is another another um, another guy that can do the same service. $28, he'll do 55 branded social media profiles. Uh, and then this guy, he had pretty good reviews. So he'll do 150 business citations for $75. So one thing that is very important is once they do build out these backlinks, these business citations, you want to make sure that they get indexed um, simply because even more recently, not a lot of profile and backlinks in general have been getting indexed. So it's very important that you do as much as you can to get those things indexed because then that's really going to give you the most juice out of them. So you can use a service such as Omega Indexer um, to actually index your links. So if you just go into here, uh, you sign up first of all. Um, I think it's free. I think you just pay for the credits. Um, but if we enter, let's go ahead and enter in our dashboard. Let's go to all campaigns. Um, and then here, I, you can see one of my recent campaigns here. So pretty much you just upload a spreadsheet of all of your backlinks that you have, and then they put it in their system and then they'll drip feed um, their own, however however they get the, uh, they just crawl the uh, links that you add on the, on the spreadsheet. And then I believe it takes around 14 days, but it does a very good job, at least so far as I can tell. Uh, for an example, if I take this link right here and let's do a search see if it indexed and yes it indexed right here as you can tell presidential tents is the name of the company um, if we click on that it should take us to the business yep so here's the profile um, with the backlink right here right going to the website so you do want to make sure that your backlinks get indexed so i would advise you to use something like Omega indexer, very simple to do. Like I said, just have your URLs in a spreadsheet and then you can literally just copy the URLs and paste them into here and they will take care of the rest. Um, and it's very inexpensive to do, so I would definitely take advantage of that. So those are some of the tips that I have for you guys. Um, so hopefully you guys learned something new. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you have any questions. See you guys in the next one.